Hi, I'm Rohit Kapoor. I'm a distinguished engineer at Cadence. And today I'm going to talk about the limitations of scan compression quality of results. Uh, meaning, uh, can I ask for 1000x compression? Or, or should I ask for just 100x compression? So you'll understand all the limitations of that particular problem. So here what you see is a scan compression implementation. I've introduced it in a previous uh, Whiteboard Wednesdays. And uh, what, what you see here is many small uh, scan chains that are fed from few scan inputs and, and are connected to few scan outputs. Uh, the uh, interfacing logic between the scan ins and the chains is called a decompressor. And, and the output side is called a compressor. Now, this decompressor could be constructed with as simple logic as a, uh, as a simple fan out gate, uh, where you just fan out these inputs to the chains. And in this particular case, three uh, inputs, you'd f you would split all the scan chains across those three inputs. Uh, it could be simple combinational logic built out of multiplexers, XORs, or any other uh, logic gate or it could be built out of sequential circuits and have a state machine in there uh, to distribute the values across the scan chains. On the output side, XORs represent high observability gates, uh, and hence they are the most popular uh, implementation for compressors. Uh, taking few scan ins and fanning it out to many chains creates dependencies and values uh, across those flip-flops that receive the values. So that means some flip-flops get the same value from the, flop, from the values that are coming in here. These dependencies do not go away. They are base, depending on the decompressor implementation. Uh, basically, they just change locations. The dependencies will exist. No decompressor removes any dependencies that are there in the design. So now let's talk about the limitations of scan compression. The best way to actually understand the limitations is to look at the problem in its extreme. Let us take one scan in, feed it to many scan chains, and then take it all to one scan out. The red line represents uh, flops on the same shift position. So since this is a fan out based implementation, you will see that all the flip flops along this line will have the same value, and those are the dependencies. Now, these dependencies come in the way of pattern compaction. So when ATPG uh, is uh, generating tests for faults, it tries to compact as many patterns as possible into one test. And these dependencies uh, prevent the ATPG compaction algorithms from being successful in compacting too many patterns. And what you end up seeing is pattern inflation meaning you required more patterns to get the same fault coverage. Now, that is a negative on the quality of results. For example, if I'm asking for 2x compression and my pattern inflation is 2x, then I've nullified all the gains that I was supposed to receive for compression. Now, looking at the same problem in, uh, in a further extreme, if I make these chains shorter and I take this example down to one flip-flop length of every chain, uh, then what you will see that I can only apply two patterns in this particular design, all ones or all zeros, because every chain is only one flip-flop long. And it's very easy to see that since I'm only able to apply two patterns in this entire design, I'll not be able to generate all the possibilities that are needed to get good fault coverage. So there will be coverage loss. So as we increase the amount of compression we ask for, you will see coverage loss. Also, what you see here is a single input fanning out to many remotely located scan chains. And that represents a problem of, uh, in routing. And hence, you will see congestion. And that is a limiter in terms of being able to successfully implement uh, scan compression in a design. Thank you, and see you at the next Whiteboard Wednesdays.